A studio I teach at has a policy where if I can't make a lesson, if at all possible, that lesson gets subbed by another teacher who works at the store. It's not an uncommon thing, and besides some of the details on how this policy is applied at this particular studio, I like the concept. Except for when I feel my students received a subpar lesson. Recently, when catching up with students after an absence, and they've been subbed by a particular teacher, I've been getting reports that the outlined or implied lesson is being skipped. Not because the sub had a different specific vision for the lesson, which would be fine, but because he was uncomfortable working with written music. This isn't to say that this teacher cannot read music, but his skill is limited mainly to reading and writing simple drum set beats, one or two measure patterns. Reading is deeply integrated into the way that I teach, and all of my students read. That's not to say that all of my students are great readers, but that reading is a weekly part of the way we interact with music and lessons. Most students are working through a basic snare reading text as a core part of their lesson each week. When those students are subbed, they lose that part of their lesson. Students that are working on marching band, mallets, auditions, chart reading, or most other specific musical concepts lose out completely. I had a student recently that ended up working on drum set randomly in his lesson the week before his marching band audition because that teacher that subbed him, quote, doesn't do that stuff. Now when I started teaching, I sucked at reading music. I mean, I could usually get through a piece, but having any sort of deep understanding about what was going on on the page was not happening. However, I kept trying and eventually I got really good at it. This is because teaching isn't a one-way street where knowledge flows out of you and into whomever is in your path. Quite often, you may think you're the teacher, but you're the student. Just because you don't know something doesn't mean you can't leverage the knowledge the student already has about the subject into a way to help them and subsequently yourself improve. Maybe you can't read melodically at all. That does not mean you do not know what good music sounds like and can't give good tips on how to perform live music. Case in point, I learned the old way for traditional grip, where the stick rests along the middle phalange of the ring finger. Now for years I had heard about the new modern style where it rests on the cuticle, but I had no real need to know that. Recently that style has been adopted by some of the local high school drum lines, and I had a student of mine who is already well versed in that style show me how to do it, and now every time I'm playing traditional grip, I've moved the stick out onto that cuticle and I'm working on the more modern style, getting better at it as I go. The big thing to remember is that your student didn't come to you to become you. They came to you to become better versions of themselves. Make sure you don't put your own limitations in their way. With that said, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Let's hit it.